Hello, hello, YouTube. Um, it's officially Travis month. Travis Scott is set to drop Utopia in about 18 days from now. A um, little over two weeks. So we are here to kind of like commemorate his career, give you guys some good Travis Scott content. If you're a big Travis Scott fan, trust me, you're not going to want to miss these videos. We're going to be doing retro album reviews um, for pretty much every artist that's set to drop an album soon. Um, but yeah. Birds on the Trap, Sing McKnight, is Travis's, I think, second studio album. It's like his fourth official project, I think, in his discography. But uh, let's get into it. So, you know, coming off an album like Rodeo, um, it's a pretty hard album to follow up on. Um, you know, it's kind of, and uh, this album's kind of dedicated to his friends who are, who are still struggling in Houston. You know, um, um, you know, Travis pays a lot of odes to his friends, you know, um, and, and, and a lot of songs off of Days Before Rodeo and Al Faro, a lot of homage songs there. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to go track by track and then give you guys a full album, uh, full album overview. You guys kind of know how this is structured. So let's get into it. To start off, track number one is The Ends. Um, it's kind of... Um, him and Andre Three Stacks, Andre 3000, one of the best lyricists of all time, talking about their neighborhoods and where they came from. You know, Andre 3000 kind of details some shit he went through back in the day. You know, in Atlanta, there were like these child murderers. And there's some interesting context here. It's kind of like a history lesson. You never really knew this stuff like this was happening. Obviously, Atlanta is a very fucked up place to grow up in. But man, there was like this whole thing. It was like a serial killer. And he, he was alive during that time as a child and had to have been traumatizing, you know. Um, he's talked about this event multiple times in his career. Um, the change up on this track was super dope. And this album is super change up heavy, super beat switch heavy, which is awesome. Which is something that Travis has become known for throughout his career. Um... Yeah, I mean, there was some crazy shit going on in Travis Scott's verse. He was saying some wild stuff on some Drake. If you're reading this, it's too late vibes. But uh, yeah, moving on to track two in Way Back. Um, this is probably one of the dopest instrumentals I've ever heard, especially on the second part. Um, you know, it's kind of about remembering your roots and how f fame can can make it hard to like remember things and remember where you came from. You can get kind of lost in the sauce, you know. Um, Steph Curry was actually in the studio during the recording of the song, you know, and every review video I try to sprinkle in some like fun facts about the album and that's that's what I have for you guys. Just classic cutty vocals. Um, I think Mike Dean did the out like this the instrumental outro that is on the album and it just sounds so great. Uh, Kid Cudi's gonna be on this album obviously a couple of times and he made some great contributions to this record. Uh, track number three is Coordinate. You know, it's he's kind of laying out the famed lifestyle, what he does um, in his everyday life now. Very upbeat, very high energy. Um, some rock star shit right here. I mean, it really is. Black Youngsta is an interesting feature, but he was a pretty big artist at the time, so I guess you can't be too surprised that he showed up on this album. Um, I mean, the chorus is pretty catchy, but the verses were really the only amazing things I took out of the song. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you can. I mean, I'd rather have good rapping than a good hook. That's just me. I know people have different opinions, but yeah. Uh, through the late night, obviously with his idol kid Cuddy. Um, this is probably one of Travis's favorite songs. Like if you asked him, this is probably one of his favorite songs in his discography. Just being able to sit down and work with his favorite artist ever, and you know him meeting Cuddy and being in the studio with Kanye as well meeting those two for the first time had to be a magical experience and they've made some great music off of that so you know it's it's about nightlife as you could get from the title um obviously paying homage to Cuddy if you're gonna have Cuddy on the track you might as well interpolate some of his greatest stuff um very enjoyable song very fun um Cuddy is obviously the biggest part of the track Travis just wanted to give him the spotlight and just like show people what they're missing if they're fans of him and not of Cuddy um, but yeah, the next track is Biebs in the Trap. I don't know what track that is. Maybe track five. So many memories with this song. This is one of the most memorable, one of the most nostalgic, um, songs on the album for me. One of the most important songs on the album for me. Um, it's really one of the first times I've heard Nav on a song. Obviously, you know, he had like Myself, 
What a great song. Uh, what a time to be alive. I mean, I remember seeing this music video when it came out. Uh, 2016 was just a great time for hip-hop, and I know a lot of people say that, and it's getting kind of old at this point, but still, man, like I really enjoy the, the music that came out in, the, in 2016. Um, this is kind of like the title track of the album, if I had to say. Early Nav was amazing. Obviously, this song showcases that. Um, you know, referencing J Justin Bieber, his skin tone to cocaine. It's kind of like a Nicki Minaj reference to it. The Biebs in the trap, uh, bees in the trap. Um, it's kind of weird to hear Nav saying the N word, but that was one of the more memorable parts of this song. Um, anyways, moving on to the next track, I think track six, SDP interlude. I mean, one of the best interludes ever. Is this really an interlude? Yeah, um, I don't know. You could count it as an official song. It stands for dr Smoke, Drink, Pop. Um, you know, a couple of samples and interpolations weaved into there. Obviously a very druggy, psychedelic track. No rapping, just vibes, you know, an instrumental, a couple choruses and bridges here and there. Um, the end is like super trippy. One of the trippiest parts of the record is the outro to this song. Um, Sweet Sweet is the next track. Uh, one of my, uh, probably one of my favorite songs on here. I love Sweet Sweet. It is so catchy. I find myself singing it like every day. Um, it's the only track with just Travis Scott on here. No samples, no nothing. Um, it's kind of talking about a struggling relationship due to drugs. And this is, I think, Travis Scott's favorite song on here officially. I think he said that in an interview. Uh, next is Outside, obviously, with 21 Savage. It's crazy to think 21 Savage is on here. Um, you know, this is this kind of, song is kind of detailing the two rappers, like, ride or die. is like, their day ones. Um, the second verse on here is awesome from Travis Scott. So good. Um, you know, that early Savage Mode 21, you really get that out of here, and, and, and it takes you back to a time when, you know, 21 Savage was kind of just starting out in the rap game. What a memorable time. He was a great artist, really. I mean, he still is, but still. Yeah, uh, Goosebumps, we all know this song. This was the most well-known song on this. Kind of like an eerie love song. Apparently, I mean, according to people, you know, this was written during a very dark time in Travis Scott's life. And one time, he actually performed this song 14 times in a row. So that's kind of another bonus fact for you guys. It's very, very druggy. Um, it's a pretty repetitive track, I'm not going to lie. It kind of went mainstream. I'm, I'm not going to be one of those guys to, like, gatekeep a song. But it kind of went mainstream, and you'd hear it every fucking day at a point. But Kendrick's part was awesome. I love his vocal inflections and his verses. And yeah. First take, um, it's kind of discussing like fake women and toxic relationships. Bryson Tiller is perfect for this sort of atmosphere. It's a hell of a song. I mean, this is a song that I don't normally go back to when I listen to the album, but I need to more. I really enjoy this track. It's interesting hearing Travis kind of in an R&B lane. We didn't really get that all that much on his earlier albums. Maybe on Rodeo, but yeah. Amazing vocals by Travis on here. He did a great job. Uh, pick up the phone. Another well-known classic on this album, some more toxicity. Um, interesting things went into the release of this song. Like, originally it was a Young Thug song, then Travis took it, then Young Thug took it, took it back. It was, it, it, there, was a, there was an interesting process, it was kind of controversial. Um, Lose, um, this feels like a rodeo song, like a song that was recorded during the rodeo days and kind of like a throwaway. And I believe Rihanna was originally supposed to be on this song. It's a pretty dope song. Uh, Guidance, very unique track. It's like a dance hall remix. Another relationship song. A lot of love stories being told on this album, and probably more than ever on a Travis Scott album. Wonderful is an amazing way to close an album. This is an awesome song. This song makes you feel amazing. Like it's such a feel good song. Like when you're on like vacation or something, listen to Wonderful. It's awesome. Just a celebration track. Just a triumphant. I mean, these two's chemistries, you know, obviously talking about Travis Scott and The Weeknd, their chemistries are just unmatched. They're so they're so good when they're together. They go so well together. They make great music together. They've been making good music together for years, you know. Even recently, Wake Up in Skeletons, which we'll probably talk about sometime in the near future. Um, uh, what else? On Rodeo, you know, Pray for Love. I think he was on Nightcrawler, too. I don't remember. But uh, yeah, now we're going to kind of get into the album review, and then I'm going to give you guys a rating. So, let's go. 
So kind of getting into the generalities of the album, you know, kind of an overview of what I think of the album, what are some of my notes, what are some things that you see throughout the project that are consistent. Um, I, I, one thing I will say is hiding the features was a really cool move, and that started a trend for Travis Scott. I'm assuming he's going to do it for Utopia as well. He did it for Astroworld. He did it for this album. I think that's really cool. Um, and if Travis fans need to thank anyone, it's Kid Cudi, and, that, and this project really shows that, honestly. I, I don't really have a whole lot to say about this album. It's a really cool album. It's definitely not his best, but there's not really a bad song, you know? Um, it's it's more of a trip sonically than the albums we've covered. Obviously, Rodeo could probably say different. Um, you know, Cassie made some underrated contributions to this on SDP and Guidance, maybe? I don't remember what other tracks she was on, but she's probably one of the most underrated features on this album. Um, you gotta love how Travis utilizes auto-tune. It's obviously controversial because people are like, oh, well, he doesn't have that much skill. But then you listen to the music and it's like, Travis Scott was a producer originally. He engineers a lot of his tracks. So you gotta think like Travis Scott is the one orchestrating a lot of these tracks. And obviously, you know, with the help of Mike Dean, you know, Chase B, plenty of his producers. But man, Travis Scott... He's a great musician. I know people want to talk shit and say, oh, it's an auto-tune. You definitely can't say mumble rap. That's definitely not a gripe you can have about Travis Scott. But, ah, man, I know I might be dick riding, but like, he's a good artist. He's he's dropped a great, he has had a, a fantastic discography. I hope it continues with Alf, or fuck, not Al Faro. I hope it continues with Utopia, um, and on stream tonight, I'll show you guys the merch I bought, um, it's fucking fire, I'll go to the site and show you guys before we start playing games, yeah, man, just an awesome album, great time to be alive, great time to be listening to Travis Scott, I mean, this is one of the first albums where I was truly a Travis Scott fan, and then I went back, obviously, we listened to Rodeo, Rodeo, and fell in love, so, I'm out, guys, leave a like, comment, and subscribe, all that stuff, Travis Month is continuing tomorrow with a Twitch stream where we are going to be going through every single Travis, not every song, Travis song, like a sample of 64 songs and just ranking them from best to worst. Um, obviously, he doesn't have a huge discography, so that's kind of what we're working with compared to like Drake and Eminem and Kanye. But I'm out, guys. Have a good rest of your day. I got to edit this and get this out for you guys. So we'll see you then.